This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map pool party for a 2v2 sent in by a subscriber. We're going to be checking out a couple of more games as the yellow allies in the top left. This is Dutch Army. As the green Empire player on his team, this is Empire player. And on the other side of the map, kicking it as the Cyan Empire, this is Dutch player. And in the south, making up the blue allies and rounding out this 2v2, this is King Kong. Yes, two of these guys are named Empire player and Dutch player. Uh, I thought that the email with this replay said who their real names were, but then I couldn't find the email. And, you know, it was getting late and I was tired of looking. So we have Dutch Army Empire Player versus Dutch Player and King Kong. Obviously, Dutch Army and King Kong, you guys are probably familiar with. Dutch Army loses his, uh, his oil deck right away, by the way. Uh, Dutch Army, not sure exactly when this game was played, so this might have been Dutch Army before he was as good as he was uh, at the end of last year and it looks like he is going to be losing this multi-gunner turret a little bit unfortunate there that he won't be able to do any damage should sell it off might actually get a couple of kills with it first trying to go for that javelin trooper but he does have to split the difference and get the kill uh, with the imperial warrior from empire player but eva i mean it's an e and an a versus an e and an a so in some sense it is an eva but obviously they do alternate as well so Empire in the north for one team, and allies in the south, and then the reverse for the other team. King Kong with a Vindicator heading on out. He has been able to so far successfully deflect some of his opponents, and actually his Vindicator taking a lot of damage there. A bit of a mistake. Tengu's getting a couple of free hits there. Meanwhile, in the north, Empire player is going to be pushing Dutch player back or maybe the reverse dutch army moves his mcv looks like he's going to be taking the central refinery dutch player with a sneaky dojo trying to get a bit of a uh, block on the refinery i imagine he was actually going for the oil derrick steel but didn't quite manage to get either one Tangu's going to be able to do a little bit of picking off. Empire player losing perhaps a couple of Tangus here. Trying to evade with some fancy flying. Apollo will commit to the attack. Second Apollo is closing in close behind. Second Apollo does join the fight. Good control from Dutch player though. Cycling his Tangus around to avoid damage. And it's going to be the war of the Apollos from both sides. Vindicator's coming in to go for the Riptides. Riptide's going to be able to eject the infantry out. And it looks like it's going to be Peacekeeper versus Imperial Warriors. Meanwhile, Tangu's overwhelming that single Riptide. Dutch player will get the advantage in that engagement. Dutch army unable to get the easy win there. Vindicators come through and this just feels like it is going to be pure chaos from start to finish. These guys are just going recklessly into engagement somewhat here. And it does look like Empire player going to be getting a bit of a Tango advantage there. Apollo's showing up as well and just barely they do get the kill on the Cyan Dutch player's Tango. Apollo does manage to escape from King Kong. Air forces from both sides clashing continuously as the Vindicators come in for a bit of a bombing run. Not a lot of harvest or harassment considering all of the action that there has been. When you see this much action, you really do expect it to be all about harvesters being harassed by Tangus. Vindicator does not get off the deck. It wouldn't have mattered even if it did. King Kong getting top deck and wrecked here as these guys descend upon him. But it does look like a couple of Tangus potentially coming in from Dutch player from the north. A couple of more Tangus from the south from Empire player. And a power plant will be going down. Bit unfortunate here for King Kong. He is losing out on the Vindicator, losing out on the power plant as well. Meanwhile, Dutch player has pushed Dutch army back and away. King Kong, he got that third refinery up and running, but he played quite a price for it. A couple of Tangus are here. Apollos are here as well. Dutch army managing to get the kill on one Tangu, a second Tangu at least, and Dutch player cleans up some of Dutch are of Empire players forces but doesn't get the kill 
on Dutch Army's forces. Riptide heading out. Dutch Army once again trying to use these Riptides, going for a bit of harassment. Hopefully there's no infantry inside of this one as Dutch player gets the catch on this Riptide and will completely shut that down. Second Riptide not going to amount to anything it looks like. Dog in the north as well. Harassment perhaps continuing. No, just a single peacekeeper there in the south. Does get cleaned up. Dutch Army cycling through the middle of the map looking for Apollos, looking for Tangus. It's actually going to be three Apollos versus two. Good catch by King Kong. Does manage to get the grab on one of the Apollos, but he won't be able to stop the Riptide if there's anything inside of it. It could potentially be a threat to this MCV. Another Riptide in the north. Tran Tangus waiting for the transform there. And another Riptide harassment. Dutch Army is just going for like maximum area as he is trying to spread his opponents out as far as they can go and the walls will not get the freeze there so Dutch Army is going to have to pass to the other side. Tangu goes for the kill, does manage to get the kill just barely and the Tangu it does not manage to escape but... Well, the Riptide will go. No, he does actually survive. That's so frustrating for King Kong. Loses another power plant there. Doesn't get the cell. But the Tangus from the north are actually going to be able to catch a Vindicator. They do not transform. They are not going to chase that Riptide. Naval Yard getting established. Will provide some repairs. Harvester gets the kill on the Tangu. Dutch Army has not taken a fourth expansion, and it looks like no one else has either. Oil Derricks, a couple of players still do have them. Only Dutch Army is missing his oil. Apollos from King Kong joining up with Dutch players. Tangus, he's going to be able to get the kill on everything from Dutch Army. This is way too many Tangus here. Dutch Army trying to disengage and re-engage, but it won't be enough. And now here comes the transform as Empire player is going to be losing this Harvester. Maybe the refinery as well. A Tsunami Tank pressing forward. There are only a couple of Imperial Warriors to try and harass him. But the, uh, no, the Tsunami Tank does actually go down before it's able to do any damage to Dutch Army's Refinery, there is one Tangu watching overhead, and the Peacekeepers are not going to be here to push away this. It's just down to the aircraft and the buildings. No infantry at all from Dutch Army. This feels like it might be a bit of a weakness in his army composition, but we'll see. Empire player goes for the harassment. He is going to be able to force the units off of the deck, put the airfield under threat, but a transform could help save the airfield. Uh, Multi-gunner turret would be beautiful at this time. Apollos do show up from Dutch Army. He is going to be able to overwhelm some of the forces of King Kong, but the IFVs are going to force away the Tangus. An Empire player, no, Dutch player, does help save. King Kong and force Empire player away. Maybe a transform coming in. Cryo shot fires off in the north. Dutch Army is going to be hoping to that he can take advantage of that. Tsunami tanks are there. Tangus do show up. It looks like it was maybe a precision bomber or a vindicator getting the kill in the north. A couple of riptides are here for Dutch Army, but they are going to get eaten up by the tsunami tanks of Dutch player. Uh, no, actually, one of the one of the Riptides will actually manage to sneak on through. Multi-gunner turrets giving some kind of a supported base for Dutch Army to retreat back to. Having that little range of multi-gunner turrets is nice. A couple of Tangus will be able to transform and escape for Empire player. He's going to be heading out to the water expansion. This Harvester never was sent back to work, it seems. The Harvester is still alive. Tangu's getting overwhelmed. Nicely done there. It feels like Empire Player is bleeding off too many Tangu's. Many of his Tangu's are getting caught in these little pockets of one to three Tangu's and destroyed. King Kong now stepping out onto the map. He's got a couple of IFVs breaking down the wall, but not doing much more than that right now. He's going to try and break down that refinery. King Kong joining his Apollos up with Tangus of Dutch player looking for that opening where they can really crush more Tangus. Vindicators come through trying to weaken those tsunami forces from Dutch player. Apollos from Dutch army finding a couple of Tangus, but there's the transform. The Tangus going to be helping out the tsunamis in this assault. multi gunner gets deployed immediately, but this is way too much Empire firepower from Dutch player as he is going to be able to break Dutch army's expansion, maybe in the Naval Yard as well. The end 
of the Riptides. Riptides not on deck, but there is an Assault Destroyer closing in from the right, and that forces Dutch player to run for the hills as King Kong tries to escape with all four of his multi-gunner IFVs. One does go down there. Guardian tanks step forward. It's only three, maybe four Guardian tanks versus all of these tsunamis, and the tsunamis don't even have to stop shooting to burst through these Guardians. Another Guardian does come up. A Peacekeeper is here. Maybe a Multi-Gunner Turk could help out the defense. And these Tsunamis may not be able to escape without any additional losses. One Tsunami tank going down. The fully heroic one as well. As it looks like another Harvester was saved just barely by Dutch Army. Empire player going to descend upon the Mecha Bay. He senses the Tier 2 opportunity, and he is just going to try and go for the kill. The Tsunami Tank killing the Tangus kind of away from that War Factory, which is good because with the splash damage, they would just be ending that War Factory that much more quickly. So many Tangus so low on health. The MCV coming in to save it, to go for the crush, and it looks like that War Factory will survive just barely by Dutch player. He's going to be able to keep it alive, and that is a huge win to keep that Tier 2 Mecha Bay alive, keep his production online. Assault Destroyer goes for the crush, gets the kill on a multi-gunner turret as well. And that, that refinery almost going down, but it does survive. Meanwhile, Dutch player is not done on the left side of the map. Coming in with more Tsunami Tanks. These Tsunami Tanks, which have been cycling around the map for a minute or two now. Vindicator's coming through, but it's not enough to stop this fully heroic Tsunami Tank just blasting through the defenses of Dutch Army and Empire player. But it looks like it will end here. King Kong with a big column of tanks. And no, that refinery does survive. Column of tanks moving through the middle of the map. He may not actually be able to catch this Kanyo. The Guardian tanks are not engaging. It's going to be infantry as the follow-up behind that. Meanwhile, Dutch Army in the north looking for the damage. The same kind of infrastructure damage that has been done to the team on the left side. They are going to try and bring that same pain to the team on the right side. Dutch Army trying to reform his front. Cryocopter does go down. King Kong is going to be a little bit upset about that. Guardian tanks press forward. MCB is going to get the crush on one. Guardian tank, the others do manage to reverse move in time. Harvester going on the harassment. Dutch player looking for every possible advantage that he can find. King Kong turns to the north, and he is going to be bringing the destruction as he takes out a power plant, goes for the airfield after that. The base defenses are offline, and Dutch Army's attack falters at the front. He decides to turn turn around but the damage will be done one more power plant goes down a refinery perhaps under threat here as that harvester got frozen in place king kong is going to be destroying almost the entire main base of dutch army but strike back the revenge will come as dutch army takes down a refinery on the other side of the map and king kong can blast his way through the last of Dutch's infrastructure. Everything goes down in the main of Dutch Army. Vindicators go down. One manages to survive just barely. The Assault Destroyer running to the edge of the map is going to try and re-engage these Riptides. And actually, a fully heroic Assault Destroyer can absolutely destroy three Riptides even out on the water. Their torpedoes are not enough. But Dutch Army is getting sandwiched here. His defense is too little too late. Tank Hunters breaking down his front door, opening up another weakness and Dutch Army just falls apart. His MCV under threat, forced to pack up. Empire player won't survive very long without Dutch Army, and Dutch Army's economy has been completely destroyed. He has no income left at all. No refineries, maybe one harvester there, just completely out of work. No oil, Derek. That was actually a really good play by Dutch player in the very beginning stages of this game, killing that oil, Derek. The other three oil, Derek's are still in this game, and Dutch Army would still have that consistent but slow tick of income. And now I don't even know that he has enough cash to get that refinery up and running. 
keeping his MCV around to uh, just for the for the support powers will will still be worth it. But there's a real cap on what Dutch Army can do as his production slows to nothing. Keeping this assault destroyer alive is great. Keeping the Apollos and every other unit alive. Letting Empire player take a bit of the front seat. King Kong did have to trade out a lot of units to make that attack work, but he still has an income. He still has, uh, you know, stuff that he can build. Even if, he's, even if he's lost a couple of harvesters, lost a couple of refineries, both Apollos go down. Dutch army losing basically everything. His Vindicator is still around. He gets the kill on the refinery, forcing King Kong to draw backwards a little bit here. Harvesters not being rebuilt, and it looks like even a Yari mini-sub managing to sneak out for Empire player and will be able to get a bit of damage against Dutch player. Uh, he's not going to be able to cancel the refinery. Assault Destroyer does run away. He does bust through a couple of those buildings. But Dutch Army, with that heroic Assault Destroyer, can do a serious amount of damage. He's just not going to be able to win the game necessarily with one heroic Assault Destroyer. Dutch Army has decided to sell off his War Factory. He's going to get out a Cryocopter. Okay, if you want allied efficiency, this is it. All right. 80% health assault destroyer versus point defense drones plus Emperor's Rage tsunami tanks utilizing their special ability as well. But it looks like the assault destroyer maybe would win. Yeah, just barely trying to utilize that uh, that honorable discharge as well, but it is not enough. Is there anything that a fully heroic assault destroyer can't kill? Not even cry, not even... Uh, sentry bombers because in a fully heroic assault destroyer can kill everything he just has to wait for them to get on the deck first mirage tank is out king kong definitely feels like he has been the most unfettered of all of these players i like the tank buster surprise i like that it's an attempt and king kong actually has a lot of ground forces to worry about here four tsunami tanks five tsunami tanks they are going to get cut up a little bit here by these sentry bombers but they only catch one of the you better get off the deck buddy because that airfield is not going to last very much longer cryo get it will save it king kong saves the airfield just barely though and all of the tsunami tanks manage to dodge the shots of that sentry bomber unfortunately for empire player he is not going to be able to get too much more for those tsunamis they all go down and where's the assault destroyer that's gonna be the saddest thing in the world if that assault destroyer went down right there cryogeddon fires off that's on top of a tier two mecha bay king kong can't defend it with just one mo mo uh, with one multi-gunner turret uh, MCV shrinks down to escape, and it's going to be the Freeze and the Guardian tanks from Dutch Army. He was able to build a barracks, produce a couple of infantry. That does certainly help out. He's trying to get absolutely as much. Oh, sell the airfield! Nope, the sentry bombers will get the kill. Nicely done by King Kong. Despite having some kind of eco, Dutch Army has still given quite a fight to his opponents. Uh, they've actually had income. And uh, he has not. Another refinery going down. King Kong has lost a lot of harvesters and refineries. Everything in the north just gets slashed, and Dutch Army is keeping up the attack. Guardian tanks pressing in. A couple of Guardian tanks gone fully heroic as well. So they have a lot of firepower. King Kong does have a couple of buildings. Anything to just delay this army. Mirage Tank presses forward. Mirage Tank gets destroyed. Maybe a bit of a mistake there. Shrink comes in from that cryocopter, and that might be the best thing that Dutch Army can ask for. Unfortunately, Empire player doesn't have a whole lot more. Dutch player has been defeated, hands everything over to King Kong. And I guess technically this is like a 1v2 right now, but I mean, not functionally. King Kong is okay. I'm going to guess that King Kong takes the L there, but that actually kind of seems like a weird spot to leave. Maybe he didn't realize how little Dutch Army had. Maybe he thought that Dutch Army actually had a bunch of stuff, but uh, 
Nope, that'll do it for that game. That was crazy action packed. And what an entertaining match between these four players. Let's jump into another game. And that takes us to Carville. Once again for a 2v2v2 two -V -two -V -two. as the blue allies in the north. This is Vietnam. Their ally as the purple allies in the top right hand corner. This is Garon. Making up the orange green team kind of in the middle of the map. This as the orange allies is Eric. His teammate you saw exiting from the middle. This is Andy Fry. Meanwhile, getting harassed down here in the south, the Red Soviets. This is Libra. And I believe that is H2O Libra, not the other many numerous Libras. And as the yellow double Soviet teammate to Libra, this is Yannick. All right. Double allies team, allies Soviet team, and then a double Soviet team. And right from the get-go, Andy Fry and Andy Fried, I think, actually might be his name. Andy and Eric are just going for it. A couple of these guys have some names that look darn near unpronounceable. So I have done my best to translate them into things that I can actually say. And Libra is going to have to run for the hills, try and crowd into the corner because he has been completely disrupted. And this, of course, gives a really good opportunity to Andy and Eric to be able to take this little corner of the map. If they can completely kick Libra out and make this a short game for Libra, then they can have a really strong, like, 2.5 players worth of economy and starting position to then go into this 2v2v2 with. Airfield is coming out. Libra is not giving up without a fight. And as sometimes does happen in these sorts of situations, uh, one team might kind of be able to feel that they are uh, not getting attacked and so they just don't attack anyone themselves by the way pretty darn quick tier two coming out from garen in the north libra starting to put on a bit of pressure but andy is kind of defending eric with the use of these buildings and these bears roars do come off but they're not quite as good as he would hope mcv being brought off the line by eric to go on the offense and go for some crushing Reactor was safety placed down by Libra. He's been overwhelmed with the micro and is going to have to leave his MCB just undefended there in the south, not expanding, not doing anything, unfortunately, as he tries to make best use of these units on the right side of the map. And unfortunately, Libra loses basically all of them. So Libra at this point is functionally dead, but it's a 2v2v2, so never give up hope. Now, if this was a comedy movie, that's exactly where Libra would have left the game, and it would have we would have heard the destruction sound, and we'd be like, Pow! and then it would have been like, never give up hope. Pow! See, imagine that timing, and that's what would have happened if I could control things. Uh, but I can edit things, which is why this game is coming right after that pool party game. Hey, what? Why did you leave? Why did Vietnam? Libra is still in this game, and Vietnam, who's like getting a little bit of pressure, he leaves. That might have been a DC situation. Okay, what? What is going on? Is Libra, is Libra going to be able to make it all the way into the top side of the map, and then this is going to turn into like a 2v2? But you have to hand it to Andy Fried and Eric something. Uh, they have done both a really good job of kicking Libra out, and this gives them an amazing position to then be able to step forward for the rest of this game. So I guess now Garen also kind of has a really good position because he has a bunch of refineries, and he also has these two oil derricks in the north and that oil derrick on the island. So Garen, if Garen is actually like God of War or Dutch Army or someone, or Happy, then... Garen might actually be able to do this in a 1v2v2, but like Libra's basically been dead for a couple of minutes, only just now getting the first refinery up and running. So Libra's sort of relying a lot on Garen to buy him and Yannick some time. And uh, I maybe just said those names in a confusing way, but Libra basically has to hope that purple will fight orange and green until Libra can get back online because the Libra Yannick team looks the weakest. 
purely because Yannick isn't as well set up as Garen. Garen? And, uh, yeah, so that's the summary of where things are. I love that Vietnam was the guy who actually left the game. Like, Libra's out there with nothing but a bag of dirt on his back. He's walking around with his MCB, and he's like, I'm gonna stay in this game. I'm gonna fight it out until the bitter end. Uh, okay. Garen might be in a little bit of trouble here. This Soviet army is not particularly strong, but it does have a decent amount of firepower, and it's just varied enough that there's no easy one-button solution to stop it. This is a situation where a one player can get stretched a little bit thin. He did go for a naval yard as well behind this, so he does have assault destroyers making their way around the island. They could potentially come up on land and help out with this defense. And kind of an unfortunate thing for Garen, even though he has access to two MCVs, they're both allied MCVs. So he doesn't get any advantage of being able to do like Twin Blade Apollo as a unit composition, which can be super strong. He doesn't get any of those like sneaky collaborations. Uh, I don't know what an Empire allied one would be, but it would be something good. Tank Busters inside of an I uh, inside of a Riptide or something. I don't know. Yannick comes up to the high ground. He is ready to fight from the island. And I mean, it doesn't always work out, but this can be a good place to assault the water from. Tesla Coil actually getting established by Yannick right there is going to be able to kill some harvesters. And okay, Libra, he's going to have four refineries in a moment here. And that's, that's not bad income. He can take an oil derrick as well. Four refineries. If you're smart with your units and you're able to play this out well, Yannick and Libra, it looks like they are maybe back in it. Interesting co choice. Go for the refinery, but uh, to each their own. I mean, if you're going to drop bombs on something, that gets you some value. Maybe taking out some of these units might have been a better choice, but we shall see. Going aircraft carriers right away. I love that from Garen. This is probably the best thing that he could do is go aircraft carriers, go probably pretty big on the Allied Navy. Uh, what actually was that? Oh, satellites. That must have been satellites crashing down there. We didn't get to see it, but yeah, satellites breaking down those walls. A couple of uh, hydrofoils, a couple of riptides, a couple of dolphins as well. Garen has a really good setup, bringing along an additional MCV as well, or maybe that's the high ground MCV coming down to the low ground as he, of course, does have a Tier 3 MCV kind of on the north side there. So a good choice here by Garen. He might be able to just knock Libra out of the water. I don't know if he'll totally realize that Libra has got all of the stuff on the high ground and that he'll be able to take that down. Satellite's going to be coming in here potentially from Libra. We'll get the Dolphins. We'll also get the Riptides. Not that that is going to change the aircraft carrier side of the story, but at the same time, Yannick moves forward. A couple of hammer tanks, one sickle, and a decent crowd of infantry as well. And Garen might be stretched a little bit too thin. He's got the defense out there on the water going for the attack, but he doesn't have the defense here on the high ground. A couple of assault destroyers going to be moving in. These Tesla troopers could be really key, but let's see if they're actually able to do anything. Aircraft carrier comes in. No EMP to lock down these hammer tanks, but one assault destroyer goes for the crush. Does manage to kill, I think, two of those hammer tanks. And that is going to be lights out for that attack. Couple of more uh, terror drones may not come into the play, but instead that javelin soldier almost going down, but not being eliminated until just now. Right into the chronosphere as Eric and Andy Fry have an opportunity to go big on the super weapons, go big on the late game armies. Meanwhile, purple is fighting yellow and red in the top left-hand corner of the map. Apollo's going to be targeting down these Twin Blades. Twin Blades forced to the ground to try and load some units just to save them from that Apollo. And this cryocopter, this chronosphere, excuse me, could be a lot of fun, depending on what the method is for Eric. MCV gets EMP'd as this javelin soldier gets locked down by the roar of the bear. And that bear, unfortunately, may actually get joined by a bunch of prayer brethren. The peacekeepers are not enough, and those javelin soldiers going down is really cost effective for Yannick. He is actually doing an amazing job holding this front line here and absorbing all of the aggression from Garen. This is just giving more and more time for Libra to actually build up an army and to be able to fight Garen on the ground on a different front. Peacekeeper starting to break, break through here on the left side. 
and ultimately Yannick does get forced back but honestly that attack took all of the pressure off of Libra who has packed up his MCV and is going for I guess these refineries in the very northern section of the map and that may have actually given just enough space for Libra to be able to swing around and is he going okay he is going engineer and this is the triple oh too bad too bad oh the low power mode the low power mode right there right when you need it the twin blades descend upon this forcing the sell off of another power plant making the situation even worse sell off the multi-gunner turret and you have no defense and that mcv is now just making things even worse maybe sell off that multi-gunner turret i don't know you got to try and do something the terror drone goes for the infect and this mcv is free to start moving but he's not not moving down to the low ground these satellites are going to be coming in to try and help finish the job and the mcv walks right into them the tier 3 mcv goes down a brilliant play there by libra and yannick kind of joining forces actually that might have been only libra and Libra is actually going to be able to take down the Naval Yard as well. I mean, the Naval Yard isn't nearly as effective as it was a few moments ago, but it does at least keep shutting down that production. No, the Twin Blades are not going to be able to make it happen. And it looks like the Apollo will get at least one kill there pretty easily. It was a nice attempt, but it is not meant to be an... Oh, this is feeling a little bit unfair. I mean, Chronosphere is getting ready to go. That might actually be what this group of units is for down here in the south. But, uh... It's a suspicious pocket of units. A couple of bullfrogs going down there. But this feels a bit unfair because Eric and Andy just have no, no problems to solve, nothing to deal with. The two of them are just going big on their armies, and they're going to be able to just smash whoever is left when this Garen Libra Yonic situation resolves itself. EMP locking down a bunch of that stuff. Chronosphere still has not fired off, but at the same time, Yonic is going for the kill against Garen, and this is the situation where you wish that they could talk in the all chat and be like, hey, wait a second, maybe we should go for the team that uh, got the best situation right from the start. EMP repeatedly locking down the War Factory and the MCV, and these, oh no, Libra, no, these aircraft carriers are gonna get the kill on the MCV. There's like four aircraft carriers here, and the MCV comes back online just in time to go nowhere. It was doomed from the beginning. Tanya's in the bottom left-hand corner. Yannick's entire base down there just got leveled in a couple of seconds. Mirage tanks are there, and Yannick now realizes that there is a clear and present danger. And, of course, that is Andy and Eric, who, I mean, at this point... Uh, okay, actually killing the bridge. I can see it. That kind of makes a lot of sense. Kill the bridge. Buy yourself some time. Tanya jumps into the IFV. And, well, Libra made you absolutely bombed out of this game. Uh, a couple of cryocopters going to be going down there. That's a nice catch for Libra, but it isn't going to stop this aircraft carrier from destroying his war factory. A bit unfortunate there, and there's not really anything that can be done. A tragic game, as unless Garen is able to just completely overpower Eric and Andy... Eric and Andy are just going to, like, swing away into the ocean with this game and just be the master of the sea. They're going to be the ocean master. They're going to be able to command all of the fish to do whatever they want. Terror Drone actually gets a double infect here. He's going to be able to potentially kill off two hydrofoils, which is nice for uh, Libra, who's got the twin blade, who's got the Terror Drone inside of that hydrofoil. And barely he gets the kill there. Very nicely done by that Terror Drone. And uh, he may actually be able to get... Now nope, the Dolphin goes for the kill. The Twin Blades and the Akula Sub trying to jump on top of these aircraft carriers. They will be able to break down that multi-gunner turret. And the Hydrofoil is going to chase away those Twin Blades. But the Akula gets the kill on another aircraft carrier. And once again, if only Libra and Yannick could join forces with Garen to kill Orange and Green. They would all have a better shot at this game. 
And honestly, uh, Eric and Andy are kind of slow at taking some of these extra refineries. EMP locking down that MCV. Garen is just wanting to fight both Yannick and Libra at the same time. But it, oh no, the Twin Blades show up. They are too big in numbers to be able to stop from killing that naval yard. And uh, I guess at this point, Eric and Andy might be thinking like, oh my gosh, we are so good at this game that we don't even have to defend any attacks. Uh, we are just going to win this game without even defending anything. They're like, man, these other guys are so bad. And then the sentry bombers just get like a completely free bombing run. They do manage to take out both refineries. Nicely done there. There's actually going to be a chronosphere of a Tanya IFV, which is going to get the MCV, get the war factory as well. Just keep the carnage coming as Tanya takes down the war factory, takes down the crane as well, forces a sell off, and you might as well fire sail the rest of it. Takes down the super reactor, even though it was in the process of being sold off and Tanya will die to the Twin Blades and maybe the Terror Drone as well. But that will do it for Tanya. Yannick has been completely blasted almost out of this game. He has taken so much damage from Eric and Andy. Akula subs do manage to make their escape. Cryoblast fires off, but it only gets the harvester. Super reactor getting targeted down by the aircraft carrier. And things really fell apart for Yannick extremely quickly. His MCV has maybe escaped off somewhere. Super reactor in the middle goes down from that aircraft carrier. And well, one refinery in the north. Tier 3 on the left side and a naval yard kind of in the middle. So there is at least a little bit of income for Yannick to go around. Another aircraft carrier does get sniped. Another tier three MCV might be under threat. Bullfrogs not on the high ground. What is that, an aircraft carrier drone? What is going on there? That is a an aircraft carrier drone. What in the world? I don't know what that was about. That must have been like a, I don't even know how that happened. How did Yellow get an aircraft carrier drone on his side? Bullfrogs will get caught, two of them right on the edge of that ice blast, but it might technically be out of the water so the dolphins can't get the kill, which is actually kind of funny to see, even though that bullfrog definitely looks to be in the water. I guess technically he is not. Andy Fry and Eric going to be expanding down to the southern left-hand corner of the map and... Uh, honestly, for all of the leeway that these guys have, I thought they would have a lot more. You don't even have this refinery. Why do you not have that expansion point? And, uh, well, that Tanya did a lot of work to completely destroy Yannick, who's trying desperately to rebuild something from nothing. And Andy Fry is coming in here to just smack down what Tanya didn't destroy. Anything that's left over is just getting wrecked by these twin blades. V4's on the high ground going for the naval yard, trying to shut down any further aircraft carrier production. Hydrofoil does get jumped on there by the twin blades. Nicely done. Meanwhile, Yannick's small army is just going to get dunked on by air units that it has no chance of trying to fight against. Actually, no, the refinery of Garen will distract these twin blades, the airfield as well, and will temporarily save these hammer tanks from the doom of airborne destruction. Until, of course, there's nothing left on the low ground to destroy, and then the twin blades kind of turn their guns back to the hammer tanks. Natasha heading on out, trying to escape, trying to make her way off of this island because there is not but death and destruction waiting for anyone on the island. Twin blades are roaming, able to just smash everything in their path because, well, there is no... Because there is no anti-air... Natasha pulls off another snipe. She does manage to kill another aircraft carrier. 
Engineer gets killed. The MCV goes down. Natasha does get eliminated. Those twin blades are relentless. Andy and Eric with the easiest job in this game. Just hanging out in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. Little bit of income is still here. And Garen is going to go for the oil. Derek doesn't quite get it. But a little bit of income is still here for Yannick. So he can still build infantry out of the barracks. And oh, hammer tanks or something just getting shredded by that chronosphere as they get teleported into that building, into that home. And when a home is also a tank destroyer, which is, you know, not something most houses are, but some are by with the help of a chronosphere. Aircraft carrier double vet will go down. Well done to the V4s on the high ground. And Libra, honestly, uh, in a bit of a surprise, emerging as the standout player in this game. Yannick is almost dead. Yannick did an amazing job. Garen is almost dead. Garen did an amazing job. But Libra has really uh, made a bit of a comeback here. I don't think he's going to be able to totally take on Eric and Andy, but he is going to have a bit of a chance. He's going to have the best chance of anyone. Yannick has been defeated, and that will do it for Yannick. And Libra, now all alone in the world. Garen, all alone in the world. And I cannot believe that Libra, who started out with a bag of dirt on his back, now has control of the vast empire of the shrinking Soviet territories. And a bit unfortunate, but that is how things go. Tesla Coil is going to get another kill. Yep, gets another IFV. Very nicely done there. All donations are accepted. Thank you very much. As Akula Subs, Twin Blades, get to work cleaning out everything in the water. Iron Curtain? Libra has enough cash to get an Iron Curtain? I mean, hey, good for Libra. But, like, uh, if this game goes on for another three minutes... That'll actually be great for Libra. Not just good for Libra. Aegis Shield does get popped, but Libra does have a decent number of Twin Blades, and that's basically it. So in theory, if Libra could clear out all of the anti-air, Mirage Tanks and Athena Cannons are pretty easy to deal with. Apollo does go down. Mirage Tanks do step forward. Terror Drone trying to be activated to deal with them. Aegis Shield a moment too late, but those Javelin Soldiers under the Aegis Shield are still difficult to deal with, and there are enough Javelin Soldiers but that, that they are a pain when they are under that Aegis Shield. Sentry Bombers are looking for the high-value targets. Refineries building extra harvesters. Shut that down! You don't need extra harvesters! What, are you going to build it on Mars and harvest the ore from Mars? Athena Cannon does go down. This is the opportunity for the Javelin Soldiers to, to get sniped, but actually to rush on forward. They crush, they crush the crane, but that is going to be the end of Eric's forces. No, he gets the airfield as well. Not going to get the power plant, but the satellites coming down might get the refinery. Oh, my gosh. This one Mirage tank gets the power plant as these Twin Blades completely ignore them. Tier 3 does survive, and eventually the V4 gets the kill there. A bit unfortunate for Libra, but... Ooh, on the island, he's also getting cleaned up. A bit unfortunate for Libra. Libra was gifted all of this stuff. Basically, like, two refineries and a, ter and a Tesla coil. And the bears get an amazing roar on the north side of the map. Garen, who once had every unit in the allied arsenal, now has four peacekeepers and two javelin soldiers. And that is the extent of his army. And they basically just all got absolutely crushed. This guy has like one barracks and that is basically it. And uh, I think he doesn't even have income other than that. I guess he could sell off the power plants because he doesn't need those. And the V4 able to crush through some of these infantry. Libra is going to have this little four refinery, two oil derrick corner of the map. And I guess he is just going to be able to fight Eric and Andy from that position. Uh, four sentry bombers. He does have actually only 10 seconds left until the Iron Curtain is ready. So... Uh, if this was different, then maybe he could 
find some way to make that Iron Curtain do a lot more than it normally does. Bullfrog's heading down to the low ground, and this is going to be a dead super reactor as that takes the power down as the Proton Collider comes online. The Akula subs clear out the seas. Those sharks will not be stopped. Eric and Andy working together to shut down Libra's bullfrogs, which were moving into position to try and stop those sentry bombers, and it was not meant to be. Goodbye, Barracks. That is the last of the production facilities from Garen, who has basically two power plants, and that is pretty much it now. He might actually lose this power plant here if the Twin Blades stop to attack it. Apollos are chasing down those Twin Blades. There's four V4s as well. But the Twin Blades of Andy are closing in, keeping that power offline as Libra desperately wants to save his Twin Blades. The Apollos just descend upon them. And one Bullfrog down below. Why did you even... Oh, okay. That actually was an okay use of the IC. Unfortunately, he could not save all of the Twin Blades. If he would have been able to save the Twin Blades, that would have been amazing. But Garen has been defeated. And then it is a 1v2. And Libra... I mean, there's no way he wins this. But Libra, what a play this guy has been making. Just absolutely in a terrible situation from the first moment of this game. And he fought back. He played it smart. He found the openings and the opportunities. And the other two guys honestly took a really long time to do everything that they've done. I mean, the middle of the map has been empty for like five minutes. And they're only just now taking one of the like 12 refineries that's available there. So, Libra, if he had not gotten completely dumpstered right at the beginning of this game, honestly, Libra might be the one, like, just taking this, and he might legitimately be able to pull off a 1v2. But from this situation, Eric and Andy have been too careful, uh, too methodical, perhaps, in their approach. And they just have too many Twin Blades. Too many Twin Blades, ultimately. And, uh, well, what are you going to do against this many Twin Blades? There isn't really anything you can do. You can't build a bunch of Bullfrogs. That's absolutely crazy. And with one refinery, or with two refineries, one oil derrick left, Libra uh, is going to try and mount some kind of crazy defense. He has got a big pack of allied units coming his way. Uh, maybe if he had, like, 14 hammer tanks that he could iron curtain all at once. Once his IC counts down, maybe. Yeah, Terradrone actually gets an effect on an Akula sub there. Nicely done. So uh, he'll get a kill on that. I don't know why that Akula sub was force firing. Uh, like Stingray Overcharge clears out Terradrones. I don't think Akula sub firing clears out Terradrones. Javelin Soldier does get cleaned up. Libra is going to be able to take over this expansion in the bottom left. Uh, he's got so many bullfrogs compared to the number of twin blades that he has. Uh, if he could get an MCV down to the bottom left, instead of on the north side where all of the allied units are coming from Eric's base. Satellite's getting called in. Akula Sub's going to make short work of this. The MCV is going to be forced to pack up so many targeting lasers from the Athena Cannons, and that's actually going to be a chronosphered MCV onto the refinery. Well done there by Eric. He called in the execution. And unfortunately, that allied army did not walk entirely into an exploding satellite as it fell down from the sky. So, uh, well, this Iron Curtain is going to be maybe the only chance. He might try and load Twin Blades and then Iron Curtain them when they're on the ground. But... I don't know that that would even be enough to clear out all of this stuff. You might actually be able to clear out this entire allied wave. Because allied units don't have a lot of health, and twin blades are pretty good. But, uh, cryo getting about to fire off. There's the Iron Curtain. This feels like some Red Alert 2 stuff as terror drones are just going in mass to cut through these allied forces. And they're actually going to be able to get the infect on every high value target except for those Mirage tanks. 
which are stealthed in this moment. Terror drones get the infect on basically every single unit. They're going to get a couple of the Mirage tanks as well. Two, three of the Mirage tanks perhaps going down to these Terror drones. IFVs as well, but the Peacekeepers will be able to blast these Terror drones as they spawn back in out of the units that they are destroying. Twin Blades coming through, and there is no anti-air here. Despite all of the money, despite all of the preparation, Eric does not have his Apollos on standby. And the Mirages go down. That's a regular tree. That's not a Mirage tank. But the Sentry Bombers will still execute their bombing run. The airfield goes down. The War Factory goes down. And I don't think... There is another production facility. If there is not a crusher crane, then that is it for Libra. He played an amazing game. I love the Terror Drone Iron Curtain move. That was absolutely phenomenal. Again, it reminds me of casting Red Alert 2. That's some real RA2 kind of stuff. Oh, these Apollos. They are going to have an absolute field day. Actually, the GG gets called, and Libra has been defeated. That is it. Congratulations to Eric and Andy. They get the kill. They do deserve the win. But Libra, man, what a game that dude just played. And that'll do it for game number two. Let's jump into the third match. And we are still on Carville for the third and final game of this Subscriber replay showcase. As the... Wait, now I'm doing this wrong. As the green Soviets, this is Dr. Suli. The yellow allied player who is his teammate. This is Random. He's not playing Random per se, but his name is indeed Random. And since these intros are just going right out the door right away, on the south side as the blue allies, this is Mystique their teammate as the orange soviets this is pew pew laser always love seeing that guy's name just because it's funny and as the red soviets getting chased right now this is buzzard meanwhile as the silent uh, cyan soviets in the north rounding out the six players this is bezpa now a couple of these guys have some names that I truly could not figure out, and so I just made up names for them. Uh, Buzzard is one of them. I looked at his name, and I was like, oh, it's Buzzard. And then I looked at it closer, and I was like, no, way! All of the letters are, like, in the wrong order. Uh, bridge goes down in the north. Not so in the south. Stays intact in the south for now. But Buzzard's name is actually something else, but I couldn't make sense of it. So Bezpa and Buzzard are our two mysterious characters who are both retreating up to the north. This is feeling so similar. It's like rotationally identical to that last game. Like Libra was playing Soviets. He was in the, that position, but down here, and then he got kicked off into his friend's main base, and then he went off. So I guess Buzzard, who was also playing Red Soviets. Very canonical there. Uh, but our Red Soviet player, I guess we will look to him to be the standout player of this game. And meanwhile, Random is really bringing the pain here. I mean, he knows allied infantry are good and he believes it. A couple of conscripts do still remain from Pew Pew Laser. He's trying to do as much as he can. Sentry Gun gets like maybe one shot off and the bear is getting taken down, but no, the bear gets a magnificent roar of Random getting shut down here by two incredible bear roars. But will the bears be enough? The answer is no and yes. They're not quite enough to totally break the front line, but Mystique comes through with a big volley from those peacekeepers and is able to pressure out those, or put out the pressure being put out by random. Meanwhile, look at this, right up to the high ground, right up to the northernmost point on the map, and he doesn't even stop by these water expansions to expand there. So a little bit different than Libra, but Buzzard, no, Bespa actually. Oh, wait, what is Buzzard doing over here? Bespa takes the corner expansion. He's like, hey, you got screwed out of your base. Huh? <laughs> you can't have my expansions. I'm taking the northern expansions. You can just go somewhere else. And wait a second, Dr. Suli didn't even have to fight for the middle of the map, and Dr. Suli just has everything in the middle? 
six refineries, two oil derricks. He could just do whatever he wants up there. Who's going to stop him? Vindicators coming through. They're going to be able to break this building. No, not quite, but they do get a couple of Javelin soldiers in the mix and double barracks from Pew Pew Laser or even triple barracks just to try and block off this multi-gunner turret and stop Random's infantry from causing so much trouble to Mystique on the south edge of the map. Mystique with his own peacekeepers pressing on forward. Engineer is here trying to grab that MCB, is going to force it to pack up and run for the hills. And actually that engineer could just grab that power plant. I mean, you might as well keep as much, much of the pressure up as you can, do as much damage, and that sentry gun shot a bullfrog on the high ground, which is pretty funny when you think about it. But I guess that sucks for that bullfrog. Dr. Suli and Random with a big one-two punch right in the beginning of the game, and then it gets deflected and returned upon them. Random following it up with not a war factory, not a naval yard, not an airfield, but a double barracks back home. Tons of peacekeepers, and he is ready to fight. Dr. Suli not really bringing any assistance here. It would be nice if that barracks was a little bit earlier, or if there were some kind of units transferring down from the high ground. But, uh, well, one sickle, we'll see how much he's really able to do with that. The peacekeepers have somewhat fallen. There's still three or four peacekeepers remaining for Mystique as he tries to brush through the frontline defenses of Dr. Suli and Random. But no, it is not enough. Mystique's Vindicators could not win the day by themselves. And so we might actually be coming into a bit of a place of stability. Strangely enough, now that the insane early game has kind of slowed down, I would like to say thank you to the folks who support the channel over on Patreon. Some of the all-time top supporters like Oz Media, Media Storm, Deadly Shadow, Anoxic Spud, and Admiral Akbar 47. Cryo shot firing off, going to be able to shut down that turret, force it away. Conscript fully heroic inside of that building. Uh, toxins? No, Precision Bomber to take out those bears. Okay, that might be a little bit overkill, but uh, who cares? Vindicators do manage to get the kill on a Bullfrog there. And a random engineer from Bespa does get sniped. Nicely done there by Pew Pew Laser. That's one of those things where I would not have been looking in the right spot and I would have lost a refinery to an engineer. And then, uh, yeah, that's how that would have gone. And what can you do? Bears and conscripts going to ensure that this building gets broken sooner or laser later. Dr. Suli bringing the pain against Pew Pew Laser. And at least Bespa didn't totally take this entire high ground expansion point. He did at least leave something for his busted and broken ally to be able to take over. And honestly, this combination of base defenses is probably stupid, but I really like that Bespa was throwing down Tesla coils to support all of the expansions of Buzzard. Like, Buzzard got kicked out of his base right early, and then Bespa actually coming through as a teammate and dropping a bunch of Tesla coils to protect him. It ended up being, you know, kind of useless because no one was attacking them. They literally have free reign to do whatever they want while four other players are busy fighting each other. And, uh... Another bullfrog does go down. When are you going to learn, buddy? Dr. Suli cannot park his bullfrogs there. That is an illegal parking spot. And as well as Tesla Coil is going to have something to say about that. Big thanks to folks who support the channel over on Patreon, like some of the newcomers. Interphase S. Drewer. -er. Michael H., Blazon Ace, Josh C., and Cameron S. Big thanks to all those folks who support the channel. Always appreciated, never obligated. I mean, the videos come out for free for everyone, so no worries at all. One, two, three, all three bullfrogs get jumped on there. Nicely done by Mystique. It might be a little bit short-lived if some uh, V4s manage to make their way over here. Or is it Dreadnoughts? Who is actually bombing out that, who's bombing out that, uh, that war, that airfield? I guess it was a V4 that I just missed. I thought they were splitting off. Uh, one flak cannon is not going to be enough, but the bullfrogs will get the kill on one of those Vindicators. Mystique can't keep up that attack forever. Precision Bomber is not going to be enough to kill off this airfield or the aircraft on it. 
Another flak cannon does get established. Tesla coil and uh, maybe something else as well. But this Tesla coil on the low ground is going to help deal with that. Mystique replaces that airfield somewhere else. Which is probably a good call. Naval yard there just to uh, give some more options. I mean, hey, if you could literally build naval units right next to your opponent's expansion, why not? We'll get targeted down a little bit there by that sentry gun. Random does manage to take the expansion in the north. Always unfortunate when your harvesters don't get to work like they're supposed to. Dr. Suli going to be losing this hammer tank. Mystique and Pew Pew Laser rebuilding their infantry army. I'm not sure why there's, like, no vehicles at all. Pew Pew Laser has expanded up to the north, has taken the water expansion and one of these as well. So Mystique only has three refineries, but Pew Pew Laser has five in total and an oil derrick, which is... Seems like a decent amount of cash to be able to build some kind of an army. I'm not sure what Pew Pew Laser is spending all of his cash on. It's about to be Twin Frog, but for right now, it is this engineer, which is heading down the side of the map and not this Dreadnought, which is going to help out to push back this MCV. One Bullfrog does get caught by that, and Pew Pew Laser decides to just send his MCV up to the high ground Random drops a multi-gunner turret just to help out with this defense a little bit here. And finally, Mystique also drops a multi-gunner turret. These bullfrogs are sitting here kind of useless just watching all of the action as the infantry start to push forward. But is Mystique and Random and Pew Pew Laser actually going to be able to break that corner of the map where Random's stronghold is? Precision Bomber comes down. Meanwhile, Buzzard and Bezpa have finally started to push out onto the middle of the map for themselves. They have rebuilt that bridge, and they are going to be swinging in here with MiGs, Twin Blades, and an MCV. It is move your MCV to the middle of the map month, apparently. And that is just what everyone wants to do. The MCV goes down. Dr. Suli is nearly out of this game. I guess he does have uh, barracks down here and tier three as well down there in the corner. So as long as he keeps this war factory alive, I guess he will have a complete mix of buildings. But Buzzard and Vespa starting to encroach on the space of Dr. Suli. Going to get a couple of hammer tanks and bullfrogs with that orbital drop. And Pew Pew Laser just sets up a war factory on the middle of the map. Meanwhile, Double Dreadnought from Buzzard is going to make this a difficult position to keep a hold of. Pew Pew Laser and Buzzard, I think, are about to go head to head. They've both got Dreadnoughts there, both ready to go. Meanwhile, Random moving out along the southern edge of the map. He took a little bit of an attack from Mystique and Pew Pew Laser, but he is ready to strike back. His Guardian tanks go down as Mystique pushes forward, and now Mystique has the infantry advantage as those Guardian tanks get eliminated, and Dr. Suli has been defeated, handing over those bears to the yellow random player. And the bears get the roar off. A complete shutdown once again where you've got that shading problem happening with the units behind the structure. Kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, never seen that except for this couple of games. Didn't know that that was a visual glitch in the game. Terror Drones get us a double infect here and Buzzard does not pull them back. That could be a big problem if Buzzard loses all of his naval forces to those couple of terror drones just chaining their way through these expensive well that dreadnought is not going down to a terror drone it will go down to mystique's vindicators as they swing through and clean that up and athena cannon is here two athena cannons from random he is going to be keeping up the pressure and random at least did take that expansion in the north so he's got five or six refineries in total to power this as he is going to be fighting a 1v2v2 2 2, and he might have enough income to do it satellites get called in they crush both of those athena cannons breaking the front line of random and opening up an opportunity for pew pew laser and mystique to keep up the pressure but the more they attack random the less they have to attack buzzard and bezpa 
Tesla coils going down in a wall. It is all out base defenses against each other as a couple of twin blades from the sky are trying to swing the balance into the favor of Bespa and Buzzard. Low power mode going to make this a difficult place to hold as the twin blades start to get cleaned up, but one of them somehow survives. I'm not sure how that one twin blade is the only guy to survive, but he was right on the edge there. And now the flak cannon has been completed. The twin blade goes down, but just barely as a couple of Tesla coils do get established and Random has reformed his front line. Natasha leading the charge and Pew Pew Laser and Mystique have fought too many battles on too many fronts. Tesla coils get established, but they get knocked down by those V4s. Pew Pew Laser has made the right call. That artillery is going to be his advantage to try and break through. Satellite's getting rained down. They're going to try and shut down the barracks, but the Tesla coil does survive for now. That Stingray, so weak and so dead as the V4s just cannot clear out Tesla coils fast enough. Athena's versus Athena's. Random is winning the fight on the southern edge of the map. His peacekeepers chewing through his peacekeepers and his bears actually chewing through the forces of Pupu Laser and Mystique. But of course, the real power is always in the Athena cannon. I mean, how can you stop a laser firing down from space and burning through everything that you own? Akula subs take the place of Dreadnoughts as Buzzard says, who needs tier three? I'm gonna kill you with tier two. Dreadnoughts descending upon the southern corner expansion, but it is not enough. And it looks like Pew Pew Laser is going to be able to hold on to his position for a little while longer as more Dreadnoughts bring more torpedoes to try and unseat Pew Pew Laser from that position. Buzzard and Bespa have pretty confidently taken the middle of the map. They don't totally control it, but they are on the verge of being able to take it over. Or maybe not as these hammer tanks get stopped and destroyed by those V4s. Pew Pew Laser has built himself a veteran academy and it is called the Hammer Tanks of Bezard and Bezpa. Toxin drop on top of absolutely everything. This is three or four fully heroic V4s that are just getting chewed up by these toxins. A bit unfortunate as Buzzard and Bespa try and make some headway, but they are unable to because Pew Pew Laser is just a little bit too strong. He may actually lose one of these V4s here. The Crusher Crane being an absolute saving grace of those units. Akula subs from Pew Pew Laser looking for the opening, but no, the body block as the aircraft carriers take the shot for his bro. And he's like, I don't even worry, man, I got you. Bespa and Buzzard get the idea to build V4s of their own. And unfortunately for Pew Pew Laser, I don't know that he has enough units to stop this double War Factory production coming out from his opponents. Harvester's trading places. Random continuing to just brush through the middle of the, or the southern edge of the map. Facing no resistance. The top left corner of this map is like a utopia where there's a line drawn right down the middle and no one is crossing it. There's no fighting there at all. It's all peaceful times. It's all economy. And the Aegis Shield actually saves that Javelin Soldier. Pew Pew Laser trying to make some kind of a headway. Pew Pew Laser actually kind of pushing forward into the territory of Buzzpa and Buzzard. And I mean... I don't know that he's actually going to win this fight 1v2 in the middle of the map, but he's actually making a stand. You have to give it to Pew Pew Laser, who has actually been able to just hold off the forces of Buzzard and Bespa. To be fair, I don't know why they built like 14 reactors and 33. Oh, he gets a War Factory! Pew Pew Laser shuts down the War Factory of Buzzard as Bespa is still producing V4s to try and break the front line of Pew Pew Laser. Just insane amounts of destruction as these guys just throw every unit willy-nilly. And no, are you kidding me? Pew Pew Laser might actually take the middle of the map. A Cryo Gun going to be firing off as well. 
Man, Mystique and Pew Pew Laser, if they could take the middle of the map, then they might actually be able to take this game. Aircraft Carriers from Random, who has been playing by himself this almost this entire game now, as Pew Pew Laser gets kicked out of the southern edge of the map. Random continues his rampage, moving further and further forward. It is going to be difficult to get off of the island for Pew Pew Laser. But for the current moment, he will continue to reign supreme here in the middle of the map. He's got another couple of APOC tanks getting infected by these terror drones. And these Kirovs are going to be difficult to stop. Buzzard going for the Kirovs was the right move. He's bombing out his own airfield a little bit here as he's trying to stop those APOC tanks from destroying him. He's like, hey, the APOC tanks are going to destroy my airfield, so I got to bomb it out first double infect on these APOC tanks and those terror drones will eventually kill them off. The airfield goes down but the Kirovs have already been born. Buzzard is going to town trying to destroy the middle of the map. Terror drones getting the infect on the aircraft carrier destroying the drones as well. Athena cannons continuing to just burn their way along the southern edge. Peacekeepers getting shut down. And I guess an MCV can crush through an Aegis shield, but also still be attacked by the lasers coming down from the from space. Oh no, the Athena Cannon! It's tried to run. It has almost like the exact same unit speed. This is Star Wars Episode 8 right here. Just two guys chasing after each other, and there's nothing anyone can do because these guys are on land and not in space. You know, if they were in space, maybe there's something they could do. But, uh, yep. The Athena Cannon is going to try and make the corner. Oh, no, the MCB gives up. The Aegis Shield was attempted to be popped there. And, wait, somehow, Pew Pew Laser still has stuff in the middle of the map. These Kirovs have not totally destroyed him. He is having trouble dealing with these terror drones. The engineer dies. The refinery almost gets captured. But the Terror Drone does go down at the last second there. Terror Drone will get eliminated by that Tesla coil. And it is... I don't even know who is in what position in this game. Uh, Mystique is almost out of it. Mystique's basically dead, but still has an airfield. And if, if Mystique has a couple of grand, then Mystique can just keep pumping out Vindicators and using them with a good micro, a couple of Apollos maybe. And Mystique can do a lot of damage. He might be able to kill off like an aircraft carrier just with repeat Vindicator bombings. QP Laser, meanwhile, is taking control of the middle of the map. It has been a costly, costly battle, but at least he does have the middle of the map. And honestly, uh, I don't know how this Dreadnought is firing through the bridge, but the V4s, I don't even think the V4s can return fire because I think the, I think the missiles just auto-destroy when they hit the bridge. When they are going down rather than coming up. Cryogeddon fires off. It's going to force this Dreadnought out, but the other Dreadnought might actually kind of walk into the Cryogeddon. That would be a bit unfortunate. And there's actually going to be drawing that, that Dreadnought in as that APOC tank looks to cross the middle of the map, or cross from the middle of the map to the outside. This Dreadnought is going to die on the naval yard. Nicely done there. That, that, oh no, the APOC! The bridge goes down. I'm not actually sure who got the kill on that bridge. That APOC tank might have deleted that bridge? I'm not 100% sure who got the kill on the bridge. Uh... But if that APOC tank did, then that must have counted as, like, damage against the bridge gatehouse. That was kind of weird. Or, uh, you know, Bezpa killed it from the other side, which is definitely possible, but... Aircraft carriers remassing in the southern section. What is one Riptide doing here? Is it loaded with a Tanya? Or perhaps... No, I guess Tanya's down here. No, Natasha's down there. What is this one Riptide doing? That is my question. EMP locks down the MCV of Pew Pew Laser, and he may not actually be able to escape with this many aircraft carriers before that MCV comes back online. It may have taken too much damage. The Riptide does go down. Pew Pew Laser trying to defend what space he has. Another EMP fires off, locking those V4s in place. They do manage to clean up one of the aircraft carriers. No terror drones to save this MCV. It's so close. 
but it will go down with this next volley. Three minutes on the Iron Curtain from Buzzard, and the aircraft carrier does get shut down just barely in time. The Terror Drone gets the infect. The Terror Drone gets the shutdown, and the Precision Bomber isn't used to kill the MCB. I cannot believe it. Is Pew Laser actually going to save his MCV? He saves his MCV with that little health left. He actually managed to keep his MCV alive. The airfield has gone down. Mystique has lost his air. No, his MCV has survived. I didn't even know that. His MCV in the bottom right hand corner of the map is still around. It's low power mode for Buzzard or for Pew Pew Laser as Bezpa closes in. Bezpa and Buzzard, they got that top right corner of the map on lockdown, and even though they lost out on the middle of the map, good on Pew Pew Laser allowing Mystique to take that expansion as well, so Mystique can still stay in this game a little bit, uh, even if it's not much. Random, I feel like Random has been the standout player of this match. He has been fighting a 1v2v2 and doing a really good job of it. He has mostly been focused on the ground army in the south, but he has enough naval forces that his navy is a serious threat as well. And well, Random, it looks like, gets an airfield on the high ground as well, so that's always nice. Oil Derek doesn't get recapped. The Engineer does get sniped. That Peacekeeper barely able to make that happen. Cryogeddon going to be able to lock down two of those aircraft carriers, but there's nothing here to kill them. And the Javelin Soldier on the high ground gets sniped. No, just barely. So these aircraft carriers, it looks like they will survive. And that is a weird thing. Okay, the Hammer Tank dies, but uh, that Hydrofoil is saved for the current moment. One aircraft carrier, two aircraft carriers down. Random loses some of his navy, but it is not enough. Natasha also targeting that super reactor, bringing everything down. And now suddenly, Bezpa and Buzzard are being made aware of Random, and the hammer tanks are just going to press on forward. Aegis Shield able to block out some of their attacks, and the rest of them go down as they close in on the Mirage tanks. There's the self-kill of that Athena cannon. The Mirage tanks friendly fire annihilating that Athena, and Pew Pew Laser. Uh, actually, this MCV has gone completely undetected in the corner of the map. They may not even realize it because why would you go to this very edge of the map to double check if you don't suspect that there is something there? Two APOC tanks from Buzzard closing in against the forces of oh, Random, and Random is taking down that oil derrick, which will just further hide that corner of the map, keep it even more shrouded in darkness. Four or oh my gosh seven aircraft carriers here for random cryogeddon fires off buzzard and bespa unable to crush the army of random but they do separate it out and get a good chunk of it manage to destroy a decent chunk of it buzzard his iron curtain is ready toxins perhaps getting called in by bespa here to clear out those buildings and he will be able to clear out those buildings quite nicely. Meanwhile, double engineer to steal away from... Wait, what actually happened here? Pew Pew Laser, I think, got a terror drone infect on Random's Prospector, but then also grabbed the command hub. But he didn't grab the refineries, so he's going to grab the refineries with the barracks, and he's placing a super reactor there as well. Meanwhile, terror drones are going for the infect as Bezpa and Buzzard try to break random on the southern half of this map, and they're actually going to be able to clear everything out, basically. So Bezpa and Buzzard can actually just expand to these four refineries along the southern, along the eastern edge of the map down to the south. They can just take that entire section for themselves. And I guess this, yeah, the refinery goes over to Pew Pew Laser, and Pew Pew Laser is going to kind of make his exit from the middle of the map with a potential safety plan, taking over Random's section of the map. EMP locks down the barracks. EMP locks down everything in this corner as these aircraft carriers are going to assault that super reactor and look to take it down. 
one twin blade versus a fully heroic aircraft carrier versus that super reactor as the dreadnought from buzzard closes in the engineer jumps inside of that super reactor to try and buy some more time but the hydrofoils clear up the twin blade and i'm not sure what is trying to kill off that aircraft carrier it's going to be a toxin drop the super reactor survives another volley but it won't survive the la no it does barely sells it for two credits but at the last possible moment the drone still gets the kill there and random again random just doing such an amazing job with his naval forces only basically his navy is now really the most effective part of his uh, fighting force of his military pew pew laser he's had a good control of the middle of the map but that might be coming to an end v4 gets a kill on that oh that mirage tank but that is going to be the last thing that v4 ever kills uh tanya is here she gets a snipe but the mirage tank gets the kill on natasha not tanya and these aircraft carriers from random are just too difficult to stop the guy has way too many of them and even though he's not totally using their emps he is still doing a ton of damage with them athena cannons getting infected athena cannons getting brought down by v4s the attacks still keep coming chrono rift to save the super reactor to stop it from blowing up but the war factory is getting targeted pew pew laser doesn't have a lot of space left but he has bought he has kept his tier two alive he has kept his air his war factory alive as well bespa calls in maybe satellites no he calls in toxins but that's not going to be enough to stop that aircraft carrier and eventually mystique has been defeated pew pew laser loses the mcv but keeps the airfield so pew pew laser could potentially i guess mount some kind of no oh, no bespa noticed he saw the airfield in the corner of the map and now he's going to destroy it. It would have been great if Pew Pew Laser had been able to survive with just that airfield and had like, you know, four Vindicators or something. And then he'd just make some crazy comeback at the last second by killing someone somehow with four Vindicators. And that is how the game goes. But the Terror Drone gets the infect on that uh, fully heroic aircraft carrier, which is going to race a Terror Drone to try and kill off that refinery. Pew Pew Laser actually takes an oil derrick as well, so he is not done. If he got a crusher crane to the high ground, then he could actually be safe. He does not have much of a ground army left to defend against the kind of meager forces of Random. Like, Random doesn't honestly have that much, but having a little bit plus a fully heroic Athena cannon is more than having basically nothing at all, which is what Pew Pew Laser has, unfortunately. Aircraft carrier still getting taken down by that terror drone. No dolphins to try and splash damage down. Actually, he does have a couple of dolphins. He could try and splash damage down that aircraft carrier. I'm guessing Random doesn't know about that, which is maybe a little bit unfortunate, but uh, he is going to lose that aircraft carrier. Did they just try it? No, they did. Oh, he cleared it out. I did it at the last second. Nice. And then the terror drone gets the gets the uh, stun on that. Ooh, Natasha gets absolutely brutalized by well, not actually by the bears. I thought it was gonna be by those V4s. Is like 30 V4 rockets slammed into the Natasha's house, uh, but it was actually the bear, the bear that got the kill. And that one. Oh my god. Okay, now a hammer tank shows up. I was like, if this one conscript gets the kill on this aircraft carrier, it's gonna be pretty funny, you have to admit. And unfortunately, for random... Oh! Oh! That's how. Okay. I don't know that I've ever seen that. I feel like someone has talked about this in the comments somewhere, that uh, hammer tanks, when they leech down an aircraft carrier, get a drone that follows the air the hammer tank around i don't know that the drone respawns but the drone will like follow the hammer tank around and shoot for it do you know extra damage and stuff all of those apollos going down random starting to fall apart as he gets attacked on multiple fronts pew pew laser fighting a 1v2v1 i guess 
because actually Random has fighting, been fighting a 1v2v2 for most of the game. And Random now getting overwhelmed here. Just too many attacks coming in. Trying to fight Pew Pew Laser on one front. Trying to stop a huge amount of Twin Blades on another front. Aegis Shield does pop, but... Yeah, I think MCVs are either immune to satellite or you need a Tier 3 satellite. And you do need a Tier 3 satellite to get an Athena Cannon. You can't get an Athena Cannon with a Tier 1 satellite. So, a uh, little tip there. The satellites have tiers, and the tier refers to how big it is, how long it lasts, and then how much stuff it can pick up. Drones taking out bears there as these Twin Blades get cleaned up eventually by the Apollo, but, like, these Twin Blades did a lot of damage. Not the most damage, but a lot of damage there. And, oh, this one Mirage tank getting cleaned up by one hammer tank of Pew Pew Laser. And he had the Force Fire going on, so that Twin Blade is actually just going to die. No, to the Apollos. No! The Apollos get the kill there. Absolute mayhem in this game. Still, the top left corner of the map is just like the peaceful area. Even though Pew Pew Laser took over this corner of the map and took it away from Random. And Random, despite the amazing macro and unit production that he's been showing this whole game. He's gonna maybe be the first team. Random and Dr. Suli, I guess technically, might be the first team to get ejected from this game. Although I feel like we're crossing, we're like the past the 30 minute mark and honestly this game could potentially go on for a long time. Uh, I think a lot of the ore mines have depleted now. Back in the main bases, the ore mines are starting to dry up, so everyone's a little bit more gun-shy probably from this point forward. Pupil Laser has got, I don't know, one, two refineries. I guess he's got these up in the corner, but no, those are depleted as well. It's kind of depleted all around for just about everybody. So yeah, their armies expired. I mean, they threw them at each other until they broke. But those armies cutting down each other has sort of left most of the players with not much income and not much army. And this is a situation where Random should probably sell off two of these air naval yards. Satellites miss. Okay, nicely avoided. All of the aircraft carriers, yeah, sell off two of those naval yards. Maybe the two higher health ones to get the most money, or maybe you keep one of the medium health ones so that you don't have to repair it as much. But Buzzard with the one random Akula sub just killing off Hydrofoils down in the south. Buzzard and Bespa trying to take the bottom right hand corner. They have taken the middle right as well. They're just looking to take over everything. And I don't know that you need two. Do you need two naval yards? You're not using both of them. Maybe you just need one naval yard. I guess he might need two for a short while. He's going to get a triple infect though. Uh, double infect is good enough though heroic uh, heroic aircraft carriers on both sides uh, triple or single vet for that guy and I guess you just try and dodge these aircraft drones and the Athena cannons that terror drone is the James Bond terror drone just dodging everything and the dolphins don't even get the kill they're gonna have to splash damage down those terror drones clear them out well done James Bond does die to a dolphin. It's in the books if you ever took the time to read them. Sputnik from Pew Pew Laser. I don't know why he would have sent a Sputnik there. I guess he... What? 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 I don't, what is, what was, why? Why would you do that? <laughs> like of all the things, why? That was, that was like the funniest Iron Curtain usage. The guy built an Iron Curtain. He has it on zero seconds for 20 minutes. And then he uses it there. V4 gets cleaned up, nicely done. Cry, uh, Crusher Crane as well goes down. Random with the EMP on the MCV gets the kill on the MCV. He knows the Kirov is headed his way. Natasha doesn't get the kill on the aircraft carrier. Natasha goes down. 
and these hydrofoils better be ready for this uh no actually put one hydrofoil on weapons jammer bro do just one hydrofoil to stop this kirov and then let everything else just deal with it slowly over time apollos do get cleaned up by this bullfrog bullfrog looking to go fully heroic as yellow and orange clash time and time and time again but random must not have a lot of cash left in the bank natasha did get a snipe on one aircraft carrier and the kirov doesn't go for the kill so the kirov will actually die to the ifbs and pew pew laser is just hoping that he can cut in on the action by killing his dreadnoughts what did even what even did those dreadnoughts they didn't do anything uh the Athena cannon sniping those dreadnoughts and i guess send something uh, send someone out to go grab that aircraft carrier stingray moving in emp locks down everything gets both naval yards gets the tesla coil as well and the dolphin will go down so this stingray does actually have an opportunity to kill off that aircraft carrier and the v4 from the high ground steals all the glory as the toxins get called in the satellite strike will be the follow-up and it's up to these dreadnoughts to clear out everything else they're gonna have a couple of volleys that they can get off sort of for free as the Aegis shield does get popped the Athena cannons burn down one of the v4s the MCV closes in buzzards MCV going for the rally going for the crush where did this even come from as buzzard horns in on this situation in the bottom left hand corner or bottom right hand corner and he's like hey I know where my MCV should be it should be attacking this fight that I have no dog in he just shows up with an MCV to try and crush this Athena Cannon. If this Athena Cannon stops for one second... No, he pulls the juke! He jukes the MCV! And the MCV is going for the, uh, for the multi-gunner turrets, multi-gunner IFVs. And, well, that's going to be the end of those IFVs. The Athena Cannon did go down. The Dreadnoughts fit, cleaned that up. And Random has been defeated. So, wow. So it's actually down to Pew Pew Laser who has four, six, eight, ten refineries, two oil derricks. Yeah, two oil derricks. And the Iron Curtain fires off. It does save the War Factory, which I assume was under threat. I actually don't know. And the MiGs just absolutely blast Pew Pew Laser out of the sky. One, actually, depending on where these tesla coils attack they actually get the refinery the engineer gets the refinery and pew pew laser may actually be able to take over this top section of the map satellites are getting called in and they will help clear out some of these defenses as pew pew laser will hold on to some of the structures twin blades showing up in force to break down that last of the tesla coils but it doesn't actually go down the tesla coil is going to be able to clean up at least one more of those hammer tanks flak cannon from pew pew laser killing so many migs if flax could only get ranks up then we would know how much that flak really has done the mcv of pew pew laser goes down i think this guy has enough production facilities and enough other stuff going on that he can rebuild one mcv but i actually don't even know if that was his mcv that might have been an mcv that he capped who even knows at this point pew pew laser has gone sort of all over the map he does still have build radius here he does still have tesla coils flak cannons and a barracks getting established i mean he has to deal with this terror drone but he could actually take over this war factory and the flak cannon survives the tesla coil survives oh my gosh oh my gosh pew pew laser actually has control of this top left corner of the map he has apoc tanks and v4s to worry about but he actually has a decent chunk of the map under his control apoc tanks v4s moving forward they're going to be able to clear out this expansion in the north pew pew laser is going to get forced out of that location but he can kind of take the southern corner maybe he's got the middle of the map pew pew laser i don't know he might actually be able to make this happen he might be able to win a 1v2 from this position he's gonna have a hard time stopping this ground army 
Unless he's got a big batch of Twin Blades somewhere. But, uh... The MiGs mostly got cleaned up, so Twin Blades might actually be the answer. I don't know if he's going to be able to get them quick enough to stop the APOC tanks from clearing out the other expansion, but... At least the APOC tanks have cleared out this space. They have left no real build radius for Pew Pew Laser. Well, no build radius at all for Pew Pew Laser to rebuild from. Pew Pew Laser does take the expansion in the south. He does manage to get both control, control of both of those ore nodes. And I think every ore mine on the map. Nope, not that one is depleted not that one okay so 17,000 credits are actually there in the uh, southern section of the map and if pew pew laser takes those which he is in prime position to take he may actually be able to get a pretty good cash infusion late in the game and uh i don't know he might be able to make something happen here natasha is gonna very slowly chase down this mcv which I guess the MCV could just go and crush Natasha or this. Oh, the MCV gets sniped. Oh, the MCV gets sniped. And now this Harvester is going to get the kill on Natasha. No, the MIG, the bomber has to turn around right at the last second there. <laughs> and that Harvester is not going to get the kill. Natasha is going to get the kill on both of those ore collectors. And Pew Pew Laser gets another MCV. This guy is just nonstop with these MCVs. He has had so many MCVs over the course of this game. Somehow how he also has a prospector packed along for the ride and now he's going like triple tesla coil but he doesn't need to get every single tesla coil up and running he just needs enough to totally disrupt buzzard and bezpa from that section of the map pew pew laser again he doesn't have a ground army to stop these apoc tanks to stop this v4 from crushing that expansion but he does have aircraft carriers. He does have at least one aircraft carrier. I don't know about aircraft carriers, plural. Iron Curtain, okay, here I get it because this is actually delaying your opponent by some amount. But like, again, Iron Curtain on this. He doesn't even use the Iron Curtain to kill Natasha, which would have been the easier thing to do. Use the Iron Curtain to just kill Natasha. And he keeps breaking the attack lock of Natasha. And the Black Trooper just ejects, which uh, keeps the bomber off of the back. Well, Pew Pew Laser now has a vacuum imploder and an iron curtain. Has a Tesla coil, which is clearing out these water expansions. He can't do anything about this ground army, but this ground army can't... Well, I guess it could load into Twin Blades, but it can't cross into the middle of the map unless the bridges get rebuilt. And Pew Pew Laser has actually a decent amount of stuff elsewhere on the map that he can rebuild and pew pew laser might actually be able to take this uh this is kind of silly but but it might just happen two minutes 14 seconds low power mode the bridge gets rebuilt and i guess that will provide some opportunity where are these forces going? Why are the V4s turning around? Okay, they're going for this refi refinery. That's fair. That's fair. That prospector might be the last of its kind. I'm not sure how much allied stuff there is left over, really. Natasha is going for the slow kill on everything that Bezpa has. Refinery goes down. Natasha goes double vet. Bullfrog will be next. I don't know if you need to really kill the bullfrog, but... Uh, what was that? What? What was that? What was that? What? He must have broken the attack for like a microsecond. And the bear does get the kill there. Fully heroic bear, of course. MCV gonna get sniped again! MCV going for the escape. Beautifully done there by Pew Pew Laser. Uses a peacekeeper. Almost kills his own MCV with that V4. And Pew Pew Laser now has another MCV under his control. And, uh, well, he's got one Twin Blade. And that's basically all you need to shut down this entire army down here. It's going to take a really long time, but eventually that Twin Blade can kill everything off. Two Twin Blades would do it even more quickly. Some say twice as fast. But that hasn't been proven yet. 
Bezpa has been defeated. Buzzard is left, and that is it. Wow, Pew Pew Laser actually did do it. Never give up is right. And that will do it for this game. What a match on Carville to round out this video. Thank you all very much for watching. That was mayhem. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. This is Cyber, signing out.